This video is based on a true story. These stories are based on real life incidents. Please respect the family and friends of individuals featured on this channel. Remember to be courteous in your comments. Many details of these true stories are gory and frightening. If you do not want to hear these types of details, please do not watch this video series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. This episode is entitled, This Bear Ripped Wes Perkins' Face Off. At 54 years of age, Wes Perkins had dedicated his life to serving his community. He was the fire chief at the Nome Volunteer Fire Department for a while and helped out with several local community groups. An avid outdoorsman, Wes loved to get out of the house and hunt animals as early in the year as he could, and in Alaska, that means spring bear hunting. There is a particular strategy to spring bear hunting. Bears emerging from their dens are extremely hungry and frequently feed on the nutritious shoots and sprouts emerging from winter dormancy along the edges of melting snow. Another source of food for the bears is to find animals who have died due to winter conditions. This means that hunters who are pursuing these bears have to be very careful for animals who may have scarcely made it through the winter due to poor health, age, or newly born young. Perkins and his three hunting partners were following the tracks of a very large boar brown bear in the snow from the convenience of their snowmobiles. The tracks were impressive and showed that the bear was walking and running at various points along the creek. Perkins momentarily lost the bear tracks as the bear walked through a stand of brush too dense for the man to ride through on his snowmobile. Driving around the brush stand, Perkins stopped to rummage through his pack and get his camera for a keepsake photo of the scenery. Perkins stepped from his mobile and looked around to see if he could pick up the bear tracks in the snow once again. Unbeknownst to Perkins, he had inadvertently driven past the giant brown bear, now hidden in a snow cave about 70 feet behind him. As Perkins glanced up slope for the lost trail, the beleaguered Bruin took advantage of the element of surprise and closed the distance before the man could defend himself. Perkins heard an explosion of brush and snow crunching behind him and spun quickly to find the source. He glanced up to see the froth fling from the bear's angry lips and razor-sharp claws digging into the ice and snow to gain traction to fulfill its hostile goals. His rifle was slung across his shoulders for easy travel as he realized he had to act. He quickly began to spin his rifle around his shoulders and made it about halfway before the bear intercepted his defensive actions. This 13-year-old, 8-foot-tall boar was in the prime of his life, meaning that he was an efficient killer. Wes was knocked off his feet as if by a freight train. The bear was on him seemingly before he hit the ground. It was so fast that Wes had very few realizations as the attack commenced. The bear immediately clamped his 12-inch wide bite across Wes's face and locked on. As the bear shook his head like a dog with a toy, the bones in Perkins' face cracked like pottery on a tile floor. The bear bit over and over. Giant canines sliced through facial and scalp tissue as only the efficient design of Mother Nature could conceive. The bear not only bit down on Perkins' face, but as it did, it also lifted the man while pressing him down to the ground with his paws and claws. The shearing action left ribbons of flesh and bone hanging from the man's face. Where his nose and sinuses once were, a gaping hole was left. Wes could feel his energy fading and the pain was mercifully numbed by his adrenaline. The only sensation he consciously pro processed was the cracking and crunching of his own facial bones and skull. Before we conclude our tale of woe, we would like to invite you to like our videos and become a subscriber at Scary Bear Attacks. 
so that you get notifications as soon as we release our next videos regarding the clash between man and bear. Perkins hunting partners, Edward and Dan Sting, finally arrived at the attack scene as they were trailing Wes. They immediately shot the enraged predator from over their friend and it immediately fled the area to die. The men approached their wounded friend and were immediately horrified at the condition of his face. The structure of his face was now completely missing and torn into a mass of blood, flesh, and bone fragments. His identity no longer discernible and an overpowering sense of futility began to set in. Perkins' brother Nate, who was part of the hunting party, was asking him questions, but his mouth was now missing, leaving him unable to verbally respond. He was awake, and the men relied on him clenching their hands to signal them and relay information. The men signed for help, signaled for help, and administered life-saving first aid to the best of their abilities, given the situation. Helicopter pilot Ben Rowe was aboard his craft and headed to the scene in a matter of minutes. Perkins was flown to Harborview Hospital, a Seattle area hospital, then spent five days in a medically induced coma. He underwent 26 surgeries, racking up over $1 million in medical bills, but he lived. Doctors used his fibula to reconstruct his jaw and still had to use a t titanium plate to finish. Both of his cheeks are reconstructed from titanium as well. He had to consume food through a tube for months and can only see shadows with his left eye. He has only half his tongue which makes understanding his speech difficult. Wes still enthusiastically scribbles details and answers on a pad to questions from interested parties. His attack site photo is linked below, but I warn you it is extremely graphic.